Hello, sweetest potatoes. Before we jump into how to heal from feels and past wounds, let's first get cozy because this topic could be a bit on the heavier side. I wanna first share my thoughts on the word trauma, how I didn't personally identify or want to identify with the word and what changed for me to now accept and embrace true healing. I felt the word trauma was overused, which diluted its meaning and made it sound a bit more on the dramatic side dramatic side. I didn't want to be dramatic. I didn't want to take from others pains who have faced far worse fates, nor did I want to garner sympathy from other people. So it made me not want to associate myself with the word and my pains with the word as much. You could say pride and ego also played a huge role. A part of me thought I was better than my trauma, that trauma didn't affect me because I believe that I'm not defined by what happens to me in life. There's a lot to unpack here and we'll get to that a little later. This mindset got me through the past decade, which I'm very, very thankful for, but there's always a but. I'm human. We're all human. Our past will catch up to us eventually if it didn't already. And it will catch up to us even if we've spent many, many years working on healing ourselves. Okay, so what changed? What changed? I started reading a book, this book to be exact, this one right here. Finally looked up the definition of trauma and realized that despite my feelings around how my experience was traumatic or not, what I actually experienced in my late teens absolutely altered my brain chemistry and changed the way I move through the world. So if we take personal feelings out of the equation, what is the textbook definition of trauma? It is a noun. It means a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. I wanted to look up the word distressing because I felt like it gave color to the definition. So distressing means causing anxiety, sorrow, or pain. In this definition, trauma is something that's more common than we, I thought it can happen to anyone, no matter our age, background, gender, and it is the leading contributor to lifelong mental health issues. So this is what trauma is at face value, but how does it actually affect and play out in our brain, mind, and our body? All the things. It affects all the things. <laughs> Without getting too scientific, when something deeply distressing happens, our brain tries to protect us by not saving the memory as a story. Rather, it saves it as fragments of what we saw, smelled, heard, tasted, or touched at that time so that we can protect ourselves next time something similar happens, activating fight or flight. That's the part of the brain that trauma rewires. For example, a Vietnam War veteran who became a lawyer, started his own law practice, married his high school sweetheart, started a beautiful family with beautiful babies. There are certain things that he can't do with his family. For example, spending 4th of July at their family's friend's house because the backyard has tall, dense trees that reminds him of the jungles in Vietnam and the fireworks remind him of gunshots that happened during the ambush where he was the sole survivor in his platoon. If he were to go, as he has in the past, he'd just get really belligerently drunk and get super angry and lash out at his family, which is something that's very uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of him. This is an example that was given in The Body Keeps a Score, and this, of course, is a more intense scenario, but the takeaway is that this protection from our brain is oftentimes doing us more harm than good. Trauma, no matter how severe or intense, has the capability to rewire our brain brain's alarm system, which leads to increased stress levels along with difficulty telling the difference between what is actually life-threatening and what is not. All right, quoting an article I found online, if an organism is stuck in survival mode, its energies are focused on fighting off unseen enemies, which leaves no room for nurture, care, and love. This reduces our ability to imagine, plan, play, learn, and pay attention to other people's needs. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second because that sounds like me in my 20s and sometimes me now. <laughs> For those of you who are newer to this channel, I lost a loved one when I was 17. This is something that I talk more about in my earlier set of videos if you guys want to take a look. I wanted to be strong but I feel like I was too young to be able to fully navigate or know what was happening so I became really good at numbing myself and escaping through any means 
possible. I went through everything imaginable from depression, crippling anxiety, insomnia. There's like so many nights where I won't be able to fall asleep until four. I was able to pull myself out of it, reconnect with my spirituality and pour myself into meaningful work. The past few years, I've mentioned multiple times throughout many different videos that I had this sneaking suspicion that I poured myself into work in similar ways that I used to escape, but I didn't know like what was the root of it. Even though now I'm living with purpose, I am far more intentional with the way that I move through the world, far more mindful about how I'm spending my time. There's, there's something, there's a root. Now, I finally got into the root of it. So how did I start going about healing? my trauma. I want to take a quick second to shout out The Body Keeps the Score, a book that played a huge role to help me get to where I am today to be able to make this video and sit here and talk to you guys about this. It, it took it took a lot of everything to be able to put everything together and I also want to thank one of my absolute favorite platforms, Audible for sponsoring this video. Whether you're looking for titles to get to know yourself better, to help yourself heal, to make you feel some type of way, or to discover something new altogether, Audible has an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. They also added a new selection of formats like podcasts and original titles like words and music, which blends personal storytelling with performances from legendary musicians like Snoop Dogg from the streets to the Swedes. I can imagine there there there's some things that he may uh, he may have had to heal from from his past. So new members can get a free trial at audible.com. If this is something you're interested in, you can click the link in my description to learn more. So how did I go about healing? my trauma. The first thing as always is awareness. Awareness that trauma exists, awareness that everyone is going through something, not to discourage or downplay our experiences, but to remind us, this is very important, that we're not alone and that this is a very human experience. There are three specific things I like to highlight when it comes to awareness. The first is that our generation spends most of our time in our heads rather than paying attention to the sensations happening in our bodies. We're thinking far more than we're feeling, failing to pay attention to the signals our bodies are sending us. The plethora of signals being like, you're not okay, or you need to rest, or you need to slow down. For example, when I went through loss, I thought my way through everything a bit too logically. The thinking went, someone very close to me passed. I'm not in possession of a soul stone, so there's no way I can bring them back to life. If that's the case, and if that is my reality, how can I move forward? That really was how my brain worked. Something very tragic happened. How should I best move forward? Because the former is something I cannot control and the latter, how I choose to respond to it and move forward, that is something that I can control. I wanted to be strong for my parents, my family, my peers, and of course my loved one who passed. I want to live a meaningful and fulfilling life that is worthy of living. Let's put a pin in this because we're gonna come back to it. I want to somehow continue my loved one's legacy, which would only be possible if I kept going and didn't like succumb and crumble to my emotions. And um, to absolutely no one's surprise, this made me seek out ways to numb and escape. Everything turned to existential when it is already so existential as a teen and early 20 year old kid. So in essence, I was numbing my feeling through thinking and I was numbing my thinking through fixating on my relationship at that time, which was very, very unhealthy in retrospect through drinking as well as partying. So even though I slowly started allowing myself to feel more, it was still more on the surface because I didn't actually know what it meant to be in my body and what it meant to feel my feelings. So this brings us to the second thing. There are many, many layers to unpacking trauma. So be patient. I'm telling this to myself as much as I'm sharing this with you. When something intensely distressing happens, you can tell I still have some thoughts about using the word trauma. When something deeply distressing happens, the first layer of unpacking making peace with is the fact that this thing happened. Making peace with the fact that my loved one is no longer here with me. I'm making peace with the fact that this very terrible thing happened to me. Like accept it so that you can keep living. The second huge chunk layer was making sense of 
why this happened to me in my life even though it was nothing I can prepare myself for even though it's not something I asked for why why did this happen to me in the context of making sense of my suffering and we'll also talk about this a little more this is from man's search for meaning so I was able to make sense of why this happened to me which I think it's it's a lot I I worked on it a lot, but there's more. <laughs> there's even deeper layers because this event happened in your life. What very deeply rooted subconscious seed did it plant in your body? This thing grew to a tree and you're seeing its manifestations. You're seeing how it's affecting you, but you're not able to see the root. So that is the deepest layer. And another quote from The Body Keeps a Score. This one's a bit longer, but I feel like it's very powerful. Nobody can treat a war or abuse, rape, molestation, or any other horrendous event for that matter. What has happened cannot be undone, but what can be dealt with are the imprints of the trauma on the body, mind, and soul. The crushing sensation in your chest that you may label as anxiety or depression, the fear of losing control, always being on alert for danger or rejection, the self-loathing, the nightmares and flashbacks, the fog that keeps you from staying on task and from engaging fully in what you are doing, being able to fully open up your heart to another human being. <sighs> this third and final thing that I wanna bring awareness to <laughs> is that there is hope for all of us. I just feel so much for, of course for my younger self, but like for the younger selves of all those who have gone through such, you know, I think like there's shades to drama. And of course there's like things that aren't as intense and like on the intense spectrum, which I'm sure it's some of you that like watch my videos and follow my content. And even people that I don't know who don't follow my content, it's like I, I feel so tender towards just humanity. Ah, group hug. I think this, ah, we need a hug right now. <laughs> so now that we're more aware of our state, of our feels, and of our strength, the next step is acceptance acceptance to me is essentially i see you and i'm ready for you both are needed you need to see it and you need to be ready for it ready to face it ready to go places ready to do the very uncomfortable thing of truly feeling feelings mm -hmm. it's hard i know towards the end of my time in college i one day very begrudgingly very begrudgingly came to accept that one i was no okay since i haven't let myself properly grieve my loss and that i needed to start allowing myself to feel that this journey was going to take months if not years and that it's fine and that i will only come out a better person if i give myself this time to feel and two accepted that I needed some sort of divine intervention to help get me out of this seemingly endless pit of darkness that just wasn't a pleasant place to be. This led me to start journaling, reading more personal development books and eventually reconnecting with my spirituality and took me to New York for more meaningful work. All of this was a manifestation of me realizing and accepting the fact that I wasn't okay and that I needed help. Sorry about that. Which brings us to the next step of spending time with it. It's incredibly uncomfortable, I know. This is why it's so important that the step before this is to move forward only when you're ready. So take the time you need, we're not in a rush, as long as we're putting one step in front of the other as boldly as we can. And sometimes it's like really snail pace and that's us doing our best and that's okay. I've loosely categorized the ways we can spend time with ourselves into two buckets. There's internally processing with ourselves and there's externally processing with the help of others. Let's start with internally processing. All of these are habits to help us get in touch with ourselves, learn 
more about ourselves and to be present. Starting to read has probably been one of my life's greatest blessings. This was my way of learning from others' experiences and feeling less alone what I was going through without actually having to talk to another live human being. <laughs> if you've watched my older videos, I also found The Power of Now, which was, it's the book that kickstarted my book reading journey. And I found the book at my parents' home, which my loved one who passed had bought for himself. When I found it, it was as if like, ah. It's like it was meant for me all along. He knew what I was going through and that I would eventually need this book. And it's just, it was a very serendipitous, beautiful, gut-wrenching moment. For journaling, especially since I started allowing myself to feel, being able to document my experiences, findings, and ponderings really helped me process all of what I was going through and allow me to ask why after why, after why, after why. Because I think it's like when you think, you just like, oh, okay, oh, I thought this thing, great. I'm done thinking about it. But I think when you see it on paper, I think it makes you more honest with yourself because you're seeing it written down. You can be a bit more like nudging yourself. But why? But why? Go another layer deeper. When it comes to meditation, yoga, and breathing, these are all incredibly grounding exercises that help with mindfulness and presence, which I think is the core, like the most important thing of helping us heal. Next is spirituality and faith. This is predominantly what got me through the thick of it all. Spirituality and faith could be like an external thing, but I think the relationship you have with God, with the universe, with whoever you believe in, that is a very personal, internal thing. Having had something greater to believe in when I couldn't even believe in myself and slowly finding meaning for my suffering. The book of it all started, but then the spirituality of it all was like what it became my foundation. So this is a quote from Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Yeah, I think it's to be human is to suffer and to be able to find meaning to our suffering. I think that is where, that is truly where the magic happens. By the way, this is an amazing book. It's also available on Audible. I highly, highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite books. I wish I read it much sooner. I wish I read it in high school. I didn't read it in high school. I just spark notes everything. Okay, anyway, the key here for the internal processing is to practice presence, to keep no secret from yourself and to go as deep as you can within. Don't push yourself, but like push yourself. You know what I mean? Spend time with what you know and allow yourself to feel what you feel. Take breaks when you need to and dive back in when you're ready. Again, don't push yourself too hard, but also don't not push yourself. This is where awareness and acceptance come from. Awareness of where you are and what you're capable of. Accepting the fact that sooner or later you're, you may want to face this thing that has been around for probably since our childhood or teenage years. So I'm the type of person who needs to go in a cave to figure myself out before re-emerging into the world. So I focus primarily on internally processing for the majority of my adult life, talking to others about what I was going through, asking for help or working with professionals just never appealed to me because there's another human being and you need to talk to another human being, which is like, ooh, like human connection. Mm, don't want that. Don't want to be hurt again. Don't want to hurt other people if God forbid something were to happen to me, but <laughs> but I became more open to it the past couple of years, which leads us to external processing. Lean into your care team, friends or family. I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful for meeting my partner when I did and just for his overall existence. I know the past couple of videos may make it seem like things are otherwise, but he's great. I love him. And he was the first human that I was able to fully lean on and open up to in the 10 years after I experienced loss, which like, which says a lot. I have friends. I have good friends. I have close friends, but to really lean on, like, like to fully be able to lean on and open up completely to show who I am. He's the very first person. Being able to open up to him to feel safe and supported in doing so also gave me the courage to open up to more of my friends and family. Yeah, trauma is real. <laughs> and the things you convince yourself of is wild, like how I don't need friends because I don't want to go through loss again and that I can do everything on my own because I'm afraid of leaning on other people and depending on them and having them depend on me and then becomes messy because that's, yeah. Ooh. but I've come a long way. <laughs> if talking feels too uncomfortable, which as you've seen, it was for me. I wish I knew of this or thought of this sooner. You can also write 
your loved ones a letter or note. There's also shared journaling apps like Waffle where you can share a journal with your friend, with family, with partner, or even with your therapist. Allowing yourself to write and process may be far less intimidating than speaking to someone in person and grasping for words in real time. The next bucket after family and friends is professionals. A good coach or a good therapist can help hold space for you to feel your emotions and then allow you to process your emotions a bit quicker. Not a quick fix or a shortcut, but it's kind of like having a third person peer into your mind, asking you questions, holding space, allowing yourself to be you and to feel you. As I mentioned, I genuinely believe I didn't need help from anyone and that I could work through everything on my own. So how did I start working with the coach? I feel like timing played a huge role. I arrived at 30 having worked through almost everything on my own and I started realizing why am I working so hard on my own in my little cave when there are others out there who've gone through similar experiences who would be more than happy to make space for me or whose jobs are to help me work through these things. I think I just got rid of my stubbornness and got over my fear of humans <laughs> in general. This again was made possible because I realized I can lean on others through being able to lean on my partner. And he was also the one who very sweetly and gently encouraged me to work with his coach to help me externally process while I continue to internally process and now I know the two can work in beautiful harmony and tandem together. I'll share an exercise I worked on with my coach in the next section but the main takeaway is that despite if we're internal or external processors, try to be as present as we can so that we can be present to the feelings we're feeling because, quoting the body keeps the score, being traumatized is not just an issue of being stuck in the past, it is just as much a problem of not being fully alive in the present. Before I read this book, I had no idea how much presence and being able to overcome deeply distressing <laughs> moments in your life and trauma. Okay, I'm facing my fears and trauma. Presence and trauma, I didn't know how much overlap because we talk about presence all the time. I talk about being present. Again, I think there's layers to presence that it's new to me. All of this is leading us to rewriting our story. Without imagination, there's no hope, no chance to envision a better future, no place to go, no goal to reach. So imagine immensities, change the narrative, break the cycle, rewrite our neural pathways. I wanna share one of the most powerful exercises I worked on with my coach. We always start by identifying an area in my life where I'd like to work on. This time, I think it was something like, I wanted to work on why I procrastinate so much. You know, the everyday struggle. The first question my coach asked me was, that part of you that's procrastinating, what do you think is trying to protect you from? Or what feeling is it trying to avoid? I think, wait, I feel I procrastinate to protect myself from disappointment. Why? Because I demand perfection from myself? Why? Because being perfect means being competent and therefore worthy? Okay, so competence and being worthy is a part of the equation. Why don't we spend some time sitting with this disappointment? In my mind, I immediately thought, why would I wanna do that? But you're my code, you're far more experienced than I am, so okay, let's do this. I close my eyes and try to let go of all the preconceived notions that have gathered in my brain over the past decades. I slowly sink into my body and I feel a tightness around my heart. I access a part of me that's been waiting to be acknowledged for past 15, 10, 15 years or so. This part of me turns out to be my younger self. The version of me who first experienced the traumatic event, who swore to be strong, to be independent, to be self-reliant, and to not ever have to lean on anyone so as to prevent itself, myself, from being hurt again. Through simply seeing this part of me, through being grateful for it, giving things to it, and letting her know that she no longer needs to protect me in the way that she's been protecting me, brought me to tears and helped shed the very first layer of, I guess, 
Fast forward to months later, which is actually just a few weeks ago, after lots and lots and lots of background processing, the budding of a new narrative begins to emerge. Maybe, just maybe, because I was so not okay in my late teens and my early 20s all throughout college, having been able to pull myself out of it and reconnecting with spirituality at the same time, a very subconscious part of me convinced myself that to be grateful for your existence, to be grateful for being alive, you need to be good, you need to be okay, you can't go back to where you were because someone so close to me didn't have a chance to live the fact that I am living and that I can continue to live, I need to live well. What started as a simple struggle of procrastination was able to root out decades worth of feels. To be able to streamline some of these questions, here are a few questions you can ask yourself in this order. Awareness, acceptance, spending time with it. The very, very last thing is to do it all over again. Every time you finish the cycle, there's usually more things that you'll be able to discover. Being present is an ongoing journey, being present to feelings, being present to the fact that things take time and something that is so deeply traumatizing or even something that's like not as deeply traumatizing. It will take us time to really find the root of it and even after finding the root of it, it's learning how to continually practicing presence and exercising all of the fibers in our being to be able to live more like conscientiously of all that has happened. Life can be a lot, trauma can be a lot, we can be a lot, like our minds can be a lot, but know that no matter what it is that you're going through, even if you feel like you're alone and that no one else will ever be able to understand how you're feeling and what you're going through, which can probably be true, that shouldn't hold us back from seeking the help and the support that we absolutely deserve, whether it's through non-human forms of like reading, journaling, or human forms, or like the in-between of like the shared journaling. There are many, many tools and many, many exercises we can try for ourselves to help us kickstart our healing journey. I love you guys. I really do. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Accept it. Let it sink in. Don't deny it. Don't feel uncomfortable. I love you. Bye. Come here. <laughs>